into that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the prop real quick. It's going to be interesting. You can see the money line here, the total, and the puck line. Johnny, how are we feeling against this one? Well, the thing is about Buffalo is that they're much better. Games get more difficult. Everybody's kind of dialed in more. It's not like early in the year. challenges. We'll see how they make out tonight. You think after that game the other night, they'd be focused on a good start. But again, are they going to defend well? Are they going to get good goaltending? These are question marks. Who's the goalie? I guess. Well, that's that's right. the problem. Who's it the looks goalie? Like, it looks like it's Eric Comrie tonight. But Comrie's played well. He's won his last two. But staring down at the other end, Andre Vasilevsky. Is he good? He's good. He's decent. He's really I good. Would say so. issue. Really good. Okay, guys, moving on to our really good game tonight. And you know, I think the yeah. Sharks are they are keeping an eye on Dawson Mercer. I don't know if the de I don't think the Devils are, are ready to that's that could be the, the tipping point there. I don't think the Devils are ready to move him. So uh, the back and forth trade talk probably continues. I love it. Mm. It's like a soap opera. Yes, it the is. The sands of the hourglass. Yeah. So. The thing about the goaltending for Seattle is that it was Marty Jones who got the shutout. Since January 1st now, Grubauer has kind of taken charge in, in net. He's 5-2-2 two and two in his, I guess, in the nine decisions since that point. And his save percentage, and we've talked a lot about the Seattle. Johnny, how teams improve. Guys are improving yep. at different points of the year. We look at that goals against for Seattle, and we say, oh, it's not that good. Lately, it's been better, and Grubauer has been better, so... We'll have to watch for that tonight, but I tend to agree with you. I always like to bet on the Bruins and them scoring goals because they're good at it. All right, fellas, we're going to step That's huge for side. Seattle, though. That's really? That's huge. It if really Rubel is. If playing that well, that's really significant. Is. Big time. Big yeah, time. it really is. Uh, by the way, not that it matters here, Marty Jones, four straight losses. So there's yeah, a reason there why Ruby is in net. Okay, now we're going to step aside. For one, do you think they could add anyone if they want to make the run and hoist Lord Stanley's Cup? And number two, if they did... Would it just mess everything up for the word that I've been using lately? Will it muck it all up? <laughs> yeah. we'll to say well, that's a, TV, that's right? a technical yeah. term. They're going to mess it all up. Absolutely. Listen, I, I think they could. I mean, Elliot just told us they're in. Everyone understands their role. Everyone gets along with the coach and the system. It all works as it is now. So I would be leery to not mess it all up, according to LG, and do anything too big because it's working so well the way it is right now. Well, the two words I come away with there are leery and muck. Exactly. <laughs> you had the, exactly. You, were, you were muck, and, uh, and he's leery. You don't want to so, be muck. Oh. So for me, for the Bruins, I think, and Don Sweeney and Cam, Cam Neely are aware of this, and I think the guys in that room are aware of it, is if we could add another defenseman to, to our group, if we could add another back and forward just to give us a little more depth, I think those are things that are really important for the Bruins because this league is so tight now. But I don't underestimate what you said, Johnny, because, again, it's chemistry is a unique thing. You got to be careful about how you're picking those pieces out. But if I'm the Bruins, I want to add if I can. Yeah, Johnny, I just I want to check in with you on this one because you you mentioned some of the veterans. Yeah. Would you check in with the veterans before you made a move at this point in time? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I was in his in his mind. So, um, yeah, those top players, those players who are the captains, the leadership group, not only with the coaching staff, but guys like Bergeron who are a bit different. For obvious reasons, they mm -hmm. do get to communicate or are asked to communicate with management as well. So I'm sure they'd all be on the same page, try not to, to to mess up a good thing. All right, gentlemen, we talked about this a little bit earlier. AJ, uh, I think I mean I think he can. I think, bump, the, right? I think in the case of O'Reilly, he's probably really. Excited. You've gone from team to team at a certain point of the season. What do you think about it? I do think guys, you know, if they were looking to move on and they get into a good situation, I think they got to be really thrilled to be there. Yeah, exactly. Right away, you are one of the guys they wanted to bring in. And the organization that acquires you, and I've seen this firsthand multiple times, the organization that acquires you is invested in you being successful. Because if you are successful on your new team, guess who looks good? The general manager, because he <laughs> traded for you. So, you know, Bovillia gets to play on the power play. He gets to play with good players, and he has those kind of opportunities. So even if you're not going to a Stanley Cup contending team, you're going the other way. You're going to a place where they are going to do everything that they can to put you in a spot to be successful. And even if you have to turn it into a selfish motivation, like, okay, I might not be making the playoffs in Vancouver, but I can make some more money. I can get more contracts. I can add to, my, to what people perceive to me as a player. Then you go and do that. So, yeah, generally speaking, guys who get dealt at this time of the year um, are mostly excited unless you happen to be the guy who gets traded off Boston to yeah. go to Columbus for Gavrikov. And yeah. you're like... 
I wish I could, you know, that guy. It's going to be a bit of a we'll hit. Like, I want to win the that. cup. Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. You're and right. You've saved me for the summer. I'm not rejuvenated. I'm pouting. But everybody else, uh, I, I think they would feel pretty good about it. Okay, real quick. You just mentioned the cannon. Were you ever startled by the cannon? In, in, Carol, in, uh, in Columbus, the cannon going off? Yeah, of course. You know, there's a clip of me last <laughs> week. I was, I was doing a game. I was doing a game, and the thing is, we we talk scares me. I don't like cannons. I don't use them. I'm not used to cannons. There's a great that's funny because I use one all the time. Every day, I what always try to when I grow up, I go out, light the cannon, like, scare the morning, neighbors. Hey, well, that's because you live at the fort of the ocean. Yeah. He's like, yes, I don't use one. Like, who uses a cannon if you're not in the military? Are you like part of the union for uh, Civil War reenactments? Well, no, that's that's Ken Hitchcock territory. Oh. Uh, we we, we, we got to pass on that. I like that though. I don't use a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we right, have Candace. some breaking news here on this. Talked about this, like which way they go, EJ. They're clearly going to go with, you know, unloading some of these guys, not to tear it down, but to start helping the rebuild. I, I just wonder what they're going to get. If they, indeed they trade these guys, are they in the same deal? Are they in different deals? What do they bring back for them? Is it just simply to move that money out? Orloff is $5.1 million against the cap. Obviously, Hathaway is uh, a lot less than that. I'm with you. I really like Hathaway as like a fourth-line player. You know exactly what you're getting. He gets into the battle. He can get things going around the net sometimes. So I really like Hathaway as like a depth piece for a team up front. And Orloff's mm -hmm. a really good defenseman. I mean, he's a little longer in the tooth now. Not quite sure. You know, you watch day-to-day -day right now. Where is he now as compared to when he's at his best? But certainly, he's an interesting player. So uh, it'll be very fascinating to watch what EJ. happens and what they're trying to do there in Washington. What's interesting about Orloff, though, is that right now on, on Washington, he's their best defenseman. Because yeah. Carlson's not wow. playing. He's playing Great effectively point. the number one spot. You know, you put him in a four hole on yeah. a good team. Yeah. And you're like, he might look a little bit better, a little better. when he plays with better players mm -hmm. on a lesser role. So yeah. Um, I could say, like, yeah, this is interesting yeah. to me that this opens up a whole new realm of yeah. players and possibilities. I'm going to need to digest this one for a little bit and see yeah. what I can cook up. Yeah. I've never seen Johnny. I, I'm not saying you're shook, but you're not not shook. By the way, Orloff is averaging 23 minutes a night. Mm. So you're right. If you could slide him in. And for him not playing, and for him not playing tonight in a game that they really have to win, right. and those minutes, I mean, yeah. that's a right. big, big decision to make. And again, I do wonder: Are they trading this, these two as a pair? Are they mm. trading them singularly? And are they trading them just to move the money out? to create something coming back. Because I just don't think that they're ready to give up on this season. Maybe I'm wrong. We were just down there with, yeah. with Carolina and Washington, talked to Brian McClellan. You know, his team has not played well. That's just it, right? Yeah. It won't be these two guys alone, Connor, Sherry, these other kind of players that could maybe be had there. I'm wondering, though, I say this respectfully, if this was Buffalo, hmm. if this was Detroit they were playing, would they sit these two guys out? Are they that committed? Are they that far down this process? Yeah. Wow. Or is it... We're exploring it. It's Anaheim. We should be good enough anyways. I wonder. I don't know I, I just, if they're I'm good enough. About how Mike, I watched, I watched I that D either. the other yeah, night. Careful. I yeah. watched that D the other night, and without Orloff, uh, John Carlson's not there. I mean, that's going to be a challenge tonight against anybody. The Ducks mm -hmm. are getting Troy Terry back. I mean, the Ducks, you know, they have, they have struggled a lot this year, but they've got offensive guys that can score, it's going to be uh, it's going to be lingering in goal tonight for the Caps too. So I mean, I just think the Washington situation is really, I mean, that's this is fast. That's become really fascinating now. So we're going to have to watch this. So wide plays open. Out. Yep. Yeah, blowing the lid off this team. You thought you knew what you're getting, and now maybe not at all. We were we all thought. convinced they were buyers. We were talking to Tarek El Bashir over the weekend, yeah. and he wasn't quite sure what was yeah. going to happen. They still but might next, be. Next starts to give. You're right. They, they still might be. It just might be a reshuffling. Listen, we're playing checkers. Apparently, yeah. they're playing Well, chess. we're going to find we're out. We're about to find out. It's all out. unfolding right before our eyes, right here on NHL Now, the breaking news from the Washington Capitals.